Hello and welcome to another edition of Resources for Life TV at resourcesforlife.com. My name is Greg Johnson and today we're going to be looking at the Diamondback Insight One. It's a hybrid bicycle, ideal for commuting and coming in at the low price point of $360, which is pretty competitive with some of the other low-end bikes that are out there from, uh, say, Rock Hopper or Giant um, or possibly Trek, that type of thing. So each manufacturer has a bike uh, that comes in at this price range from kind of three to $400. This one's pretty stable. It has some nice features. I'm going to point out those features and also show you some of the modifications that I've made to make the bike, I think, a little bit more uh, user-friendly and better for the commuting environment. So let's go ahead and take a look. Getting here with the handlebars, some things I want to point out. The handlebar grips are not the stock grips that came with the bike. Um, I've had these outfitted, instead of having a round grip, you'll notice this has kind of a flat surface and it's ideal for resting the palms so that your uh, tendons and nerves in the hand don't get pinched. So that's real key. I think that's a good investment to go ahead and upgrade to the uh, nicer grips. Uh, the shifting is really quite nice. It's a, a lever action here. You push in to shift up and then pull this lever back here to shift down. Very simple for the beginning or advanced user. Here's something I want to point out. The um, handlebars are a little bit thick here, so that means you're not going to be able to get a standard uh, mounting for, let's say, a bell like this one here um, or the speedometer, odometer. Um, you'll have to rig up something kind of special because this is a really thick handlebar uh, stem up here, this area. So uh, the top tube with, with that. Um, over here again, you're um, actually letting this lever back to shift and then pushing in to shift back the other direction uh, for the rear derailleur. Braking's pretty good. I did notice some squeaking, which you might hear here. You hear that? It gets really loud. It started getting really noisy and windy outside, so I decided to come in and finish the rest of the audio portion, the narration in the studio. I'm showing you a close-up of these cool stop brakes, and that was an attempt to get rid of that squeaking noise. I've tried some different brake pads, none seem to help. The cool stop are nice, they work well when uh, the rims have water or even like a little bit of oil on them. Uh, so they're definitely a plus. And you know, it turned out that that squeaking noise has become kind of a safety feature. Often people are, you know, wearing headphones in, in listening to music in their own world. Um, so you need more than just a bike bell to alert people that you're coming up behind them. And the squeaking is just, it's perfect. It's there when you need it, when you start braking as you're approaching. So. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. I want to show you um, this adapter I put on the valve stem. The valve stems that come with the bike are uh, Presta valves, and so they're narrower. They don't work, you know, if you go to a gas station or use a standard air pump, you just can't pump up the tires, right? So this little adapter, the brass end piece, that fitting there, allows you to go to pretty much any air pump and fill up the tires, which is really convenient for a commuting bike because you're going to be riding around town and maybe you aren't going to have a you know specialized bike shop or carrying around a special pump with you to pump up the tires. Um, so that's what this little brass fitting is for. And you know, at about 50 cents or a dollar, it's definitely worth it um, to have the convenience. I do find that the Presta valves that come with the bike, for whatever reason, they maybe it's just me, but it seems like they tend to hold air better. I've actually noticed it over the years. It just seems like um, Presta valves on bikes tend to keep the air in. Maybe it's just a tighter seal with the rubber gaskets in there or whatever. Um, I want to show you there are these fenders that I've had added to the bike, a another item that I moved from my previous bike. I'm going to slow down a bit here and just kind of zoom in on it. Um, these are pretty basic fenders. They mount to the, uh, the forks there, you can see, and cover most of the rear part of the tire. And that's going to prevent road dirt grit, sand, all that kind of stuff from getting up in here, what's called the bottom bracket, uh, those front gears that are really susceptible to having uh, picking up the road debris. So um, that's definitely a worthwhile item. Uh, fenders aren't that expensive, I think like 15, 20 bucks or something, and you can get some of those. Um, depending on what kind of bike you have, you know, if you have wider tires, you'll need wider fenders. The kickstand there, 
um, $10 item. I had that added on uh, afterwards. Uh, definitely worth it. You probably want to stand the bike up on its own sometime. Um, zooming in here to the back of the bike, I'm going to show you there is this black bike rack. That's also from a previous bicycle. It's a Trek interchange. Let me zoom in a little bit here. There we go. And you can see Trek interchange. Um, I like this rack. I mean, it's it works like a normal rack, but it also works with these special Trek interchange bags that you can get. So they just snap in and they're easily removed with just pushing one button on the back there. Um, so definitely worth it. This bag's kind of nice, pretty standard um, on top of the rack bag. You can hold a U-bolt lock in here pretty easily. It's the right shape, you know. Um, and one feature that I like about this bag, it does expand, it has these side pockets that are pretty big. So um, you can really get a lot of extra, maybe, you know, a rain suit in here or extra gear or whatever you want for a day trip or a weekend trip um, on the bike or just going from home to work. For whatever won't fit in a rear bike bag, you may want to go ahead and get a trailer like the one pictured here. Trailers are typically, um, I'd say at the low end, $250 on up to $500. This one here is from Bicycle or Evolution, which is bikerev.com on the web. And their trailers are starting at about 250 and up from there. I, I like these because you can order just the metal uh, frame structure and put your own tub on the back. Here's a picture of their website, and you can see they offer a variety of different basic trailers. Yeah, we're starting at 250 350 for a heavy duty trailer. Um, and because it's using a rubber tub, it's relatively, you know, waterproof, which is a good thing. The connection is similar to that of a high pressure air hose, like air tools that are found in a garage or workshop, and so it just clips on and clips off really quick, really easy. You don't have to fiddle around with straps or whatever. You just clip it on. There is a U uh, bolt there you can see and that U bolt is useful for locking the trailer down if you want to lock it to a bike rack. Um, now one thing I want to point out also is that they do have accessories so you can have you know uh, the same trailer can be used for two or three bikes. You can just buy that adapter and easily hook it in. So BikeRev.com, Bicycler Evolution, are the people that offer that trailer. They also will sell the trailer to dealers for about, I think, $130, $150. Um, so if you're a dealer, you may want to connect with them and find out about that program. I ended up replacing the seat that came on the bike with a pretty basic one that was, I think, about $20, the Celereal um, seat that's very cushiony, very comfortable. If you're putting a lot of miles on, uh, which I have, I have like... Uh, let's take a look at the odometer here and, and see. I think it's like a thousand, yeah, 1,169 miles. You know, um, you want a comfortable seat, so it's worth like 20 bucks to, to put one on. Bikes typically don't come with a water bottle cage, so you'll want to go ahead and use one from a previous bicycle or pick out one that fits the kind of bottle that you're going to be using. I went with a basic aluminum black one, and uh, that works just fine. Um, one thing I found was that the pedals on most bikes are kind of small and plastic and slippery and you know in the rain in as i say you know year-round biking you're going to want something a little more stable than that so easton has something they call the bigfoot pedal which is pictured here and you're going to get a better grip with your shoe to the pedal um, less likely to slip off and have an accident so that's a good thing and i showed you before the um, fenders here they're, they're from planet bike there are a bunch of brands out there. I, these are just the ones that were available, but I, I found that they worked well. It's good to have the plastic lip thing on the back there, though, to really catch the extra road dirt. Um, the seat post. I went ahead and got a heavier-duty seat post because I wanted to make sure I had plenty of leg room, so that's what that is. And uh, basically, other than those uh, modifications, the bike itself, I think, has performed pretty well. Um, it's, you know, a stiff frame bike. There's no suspension to it, uh, but the Insight one from Diamondback, I would say, is, is definitely worth the money 360 bucks it's the low end so um, if you have any questions feel free to post them here this has been a production of resourcesforlife.com where you'll find resources for better living come visit us on the web <laughs>